Hey everyone. Hey folks, how's it going? How's it going? How are we doing today? I don't have any makeup on because I'm gonna be doing a get ready with me because I wanna play with some new makeup that I got in the mail a couple of weeks ago and then also talk about lash gate because I feel like I have thoughts that I wanna share that I haven't yet. Let me put on some primer first because I haven't done that yet. Um, if you guys don't know anything about Lashgate, I'll put a couple of videos below that maybe you're like a primer to the situation because I don't necessarily feel like explaining the whole thing, but this happened a couple weeks ago on TikTok with one of the biggest creators on TikTok, one of the biggest beauty creators on TikTok, um, Michaela Nogueira, who I'm sure you've seen videos about her. I'm sure you've seen videos of her. She does really intricate looks. She does makeup tutorials, but... Uh, I had thoughts that I wanted to share because um, I got a bit of deja vu. I got a bit of deja vu seeing the response to it, seeing her response to it because she has since not really responded to it. Like sh she since responded to it by not responding to it, which is a choice uh, to basically just completely disregard the fact that you like committed fraud through false advertisement on an advertisement that you were paid to um, post, but it, it did not follow FTC guidelines. You know, it happens. I do not follow TikTok, I will say. I do not follow TikTok very closely. I, I watch some people on TikTok. I've been watching more and more TikTok videos lately. Josh and I will scroll through things and laugh at stuff. Usually it's like videos of animals with the trickster voice filter on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When I saw that this was happening, when I saw all the all the hullabaloo on the timeline about Michaela and about this mascara and about these Ardell lashes, I was like, what is happening? So I asked my group chat and I was like, hello, please, thank you. What is going on? Because I don't watch TikTok. I don't know what's happening. What is happening? And I got the, the brief synopsis of it. And then I kind of followed everything after the fact because... It was very fascinating to see the different kinds of responses from people, whether they were people who are fans of Michaela or people who were colleagues of Michaela or people who used to make beauty content who were maybe former colleagues and now not because it's a very different world now than it was like back when YouTubers were like first starting to get sponsored content and make sponsored videos, a lot of them being undisclosed. So it's weird to see now on TikTok that cycle repeating itself. Um, because you would have thought that people would have learned from everybody's mistakes six years ago, you know, because it's it's been a while. You would have thought that people would have had like a little more hindsight, but no, it's still happening on TikTok. But it got me thinking, A, about how kind of cyclical the makeup community is becoming on TikTok and how it's basically repeating all of the things that we did on YouTube years ago. One of my besties, Hannah, actually made a video about this. Um, I thought about making a video around that time, but then she made one and then I had two sponsored videos and I was like, I really don't feel like making like a sponsored video about an undisclosed advertisement. It, it felt a little bit uncouth. So I was like, I'll just wait. I'll just wait until I have, until I can actually show you guys the makeup that I'm going to be wearing tonight because uh, it didn't actually technically get released until yesterday. A new collection from Odin's Eye with Batty Bean, Makeup Just for Fun, and Lauren May Beauty. So we're going to be using eyeshadows from that collection today because I got it in the mail. Because quick side note, I feel like those three creators have been, they've worked so hard while YouTube has just been like treating creators like crap and they've been working so hard and consistently putting out content and like consistently making content that is like in their wheelhouse, interesting and stuff that their audience is asking for. So very excited for them to get a collaboration. That was my side tangent. But Michaela, back to the, this video is gonna be all over the place. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock at night, but um, you know, sometimes you just want to sit and put makeup on for 45 minutes and then take it right off before you go to bed, you know? <laughs> also, my hair looks good right now, so we're not wasting it. Michaela posted a video, an advertisement, which was very covertly disclosed to the point where it actually doesn't follow FTC guidelines because it was in like tiny font on the screen for not very long. Look how long and lengthened my lashes look. You, l this literally just changed my life. It wasn't in the text description at the time of posting. It wasn't up for the whole length of the video. It wasn't verbally said. It was literally just like L'Oreal partner, like 
very tiny on the screen for like less than 10 seconds, I think. In the video, she puts it on and starts to say, oh my God, this is like, it looks like false lashes. This is just one coat. Oh my God, no other mascara is gonna be able to measure up to this, that kind of stuff. Except girl made a boo-boo because she used false lashes in the video and um, everybody clocked it very, very quickly. Okay, so basically I'm taking the curved side and I'm going root to tip and I'm satin to coat the lashes. And then once you've done that, you flip the brush to the side and you use the hook comb to basically separate. This is one coat. Okay, I'm gonna add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless and I'm not sure anyone's gonna ever be able to compete with this mascara. Uh, they're like, hey, no, those are Ardell, uh, I think Demi Wispies, but Ardell lashes, like little natural Ardell lashes. People noticed it because as much as mascara can help like lengthen your lashes, thicken your lashes, make them darker, curlier, you cannot add hairs to your face with a mascara. And um, the aftermath, the, the, the before and after, the after, there were more lashes, like considerably more lashes on Michaela's face. So people called her out for it. You know, it was, it was interesting to see like I said, the different kinds of responses that people were having to it. A lot of her fans were like, oh girl, it's no big deal. And then a lot of her fans were like, oh my God, you betrayed our trust, blah, blah, blah. And then mostly what I saw at least fellow creators being like, we should know better by now. <laughs> like you should know better. This just makes everybody else look bad. This makes nobody want to take us seriously. Also your audience has been built on people trusting your opinions about makeup reviews because that's a lot of what she does on her channel is makeup reviews besides tutorials. So you have people trusting her judgment on these products and then she comes in to just lie when yeah, it, it, it does, it's not, it's not a good look. Okay, it's not a good look. It's not a good look to uh, lie to your audience and then also double down on that lie because after the initial video went up, right? Everybody started noticing, holy crap, this doesn't look real. These are fake lashes. And then she tried to, to, she tried to double down thinking that everybody was that stupid to like try and believe that she wasn't wearing false lashes. Like she doubled down and was just like, no, I'm not wearing false lashes. This is just the mascara. We're like, girl, Stop. The thing that's happening on TikTok now is that there still is this kind of level of shame around doing sponsored content the way that there was on YouTube years ago. Now, because of people's understanding of AdSense and people's understanding of being demonetized and the algorithm, people are far more chill with sponsored content. Like I take sponsored content all the time now. One, the algorithm hasn't liked me lately. Two, I wanna get paid for, for my work. And I think a lot of people understand that now. So on YouTube, sponsored content is the norm. But what I think is happening on TikTok now is because it hasn't caught up to where we are now on YouTube, there's still people not disclosing those sponsorships and people believing them. Uh, people watching, they're like, oh my God, I love this thing. I love that you're talking about this. Not realizing that they're being sold to. Not realizing they're being sold to in the slightest because a lot of the people on TikTok, the audience tends to, to skew a little bit younger than YouTube. So they're not as like aware of just like the the signs that something is an ad, the way that people who maybe have been watching them for even longer on YouTube can kind of decipher. Um, I'm gonna start with the Forest Story or the Flora Story palette from uh, Makeup Just For Fun. This one actually might be, this is my favorite out of the three. This is my favorite out of the three. It's definitely my kind of color story. Um, let's just do this brown. I don't know what I'm going for today. I really don't. I'm gonna try to use all the palettes, but I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to. <sighs> anyway. Um, the messed up part about people being weird about ads on TikTok and sponsored content on TikTok is that TikTok doesn't have the same kind of internal revenue that YouTube does built in with AdSense. People who have millions of followers on TikTok do not get paid by TikTok very much at all. So really the only form of income that people are getting from being TikTok creators are, um, ads and sponsored content. Whenever I see somebody who I like, who I see blow up and who I see get sponsors and, and get stuff sent to them and you know, just, just make it. I'm just like, yes, get that money, please. Like I'm all, I'm all for people being able to make a living making the content that they like making and that other people like watching. So I'm always really excited when I see people who I like getting bigger and getting sponsors. But the thing that's happening now with the whole Michaela thing is that um, she's kind of brushed it under the rug. Like, I'm gonna take this green shade now, this one. 
Like, if you didn't notice that um, Mr. Jeremiah Starfish is back for some reason, his reasoning being that um, he wanted to come back to the internet to, like, be the voice of honesty, to be the truthful voice about the makeup, to be what he used to be, which apparently was, like, supposedly an honest review channel. I don't, I don't really care. Truthfully, I don't, I don't care. So now when you a bunch of people who are pissed off at Michaela and maybe don't know everything about Jeffree Star, they're like seeing him come back. They're like, yes, at least he's honest. We're like, did you forget about the racism though? It's weird that his ability to tell you whether or not a mascara is good, truthfully, um, is more important to anyone th than um, him being a racist. So you have him coming back, posting a video, people being like excited that he's back, which is like, no, please don't bring him back. Please don't like YouTube dealt with him for years. Please just let him remain in exile and let him remain on his weird little yak ranch in Wyoming where he has commodified the state of Wyoming, sold yak meat, and then also made makeup palettes themed around yaks. It's a little bit weird, don't you think? Here's Betty Betty Jean's palette. I might use the gold from here because it's a little bright for what I'm going for right now, but I might use the gold. Yeah, that's pretty. I'll do that. Maybe I'll do this as like my shimmer on my highlight on my cheekbones. And then the Sea Talk palette is the one from Lauren, which also is very sparkly. I've used this one. I really like it. Maybe I'll do some of the bronze on the bottom. Maybe I'll do Sunken Temple on my like lower lash line or something. Hmm. I haven't worn like shimmer shimmers in a while. Ooh. Here. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, this is a pretty gold. Betty Jean with the pretty colors. It's so pretty. I love this. Take the little plasticky bit off. Oh, I like, I thought it was going to be more yellow in the pan. It looks more yellow in the pan than it does on the eyes. So I actually kind of like it more because I thought it was going to be like really yellow, but it's not. Pretty. It's this one. That one right there. What this all has reminded me of a lot is um, Jaclyn Hill and how people um, have reacted to her various untruths over the years, whether or not they were about Morphe palettes being affiliated or about um, lipsticks having hair in them, you know, the many things that Jaclyn Hill has lied about over the years. That proved to be a pattern and that kind of, I think is a different situation than if somebody does something one time and then like learns from their mistakes and doesn't do it again. Um, but if somebody's doing something like that multiple times over and over, knowing that it makes people not trust them more and yet they still do it, that's where I have a problem with. Not defending Michaela's actions in any way because it's stupid. It's very stupid to do. It's very dumb. And I think that you should know better, especially if you've been making content for any length of time. I get that a lot of these deals that brands are, are, are coming to you with are like really, really shiny and really exciting and really like, it gives you so much like hope and ideas. They're like, oh my gosh, I can make all this money doing this, which you can, you absolutely can. And you absolutely should. But like, there's only so much you can do with that audience. And there's only so much you can do um, while lying to them until they stop believing you. I'm wearing a lot of eyeshadow, but I like it. I feel kind of like a little bit like a fairy, a little bit like a little, a little fae. Josh and I have been watching Vox Machina. So <laughs> I've been in a very like fantasy kind of mood, which is perfect because um, these palettes are all very like, I don't know, fantastical. And like, look at the, look at the colors. This is, this looks like the fae world from Vox Machina. It's got little mushrooms. I swear every time, Makeup Just For Fun posts so consistently and is so on top of her game that I swear I will search for like a photo of a product. I will search for a photo of a product or a video about a product. And almost every single time I will see one of her videos or photos in the Google images hustling. I, I commend you all for like working your asses off. And also I love how these shadows blend, but anyway, Anyway, back to what was happening on TikTok and Mikhail. The thing that kind of made me hold off a little bit on posting a video like right after it happened, A, I wanted to like wait for her response and see what she was gonna do. And B, 
I kind of wanted to see what other people were going to do because, you know, like what were drama channels going to do? What were commentary channels going to do? Who was going to talk about this? Like what kinds of backlash was there going to be? The thing is, who, the people who were probably the most angry were fans. And like, they have every right to be pissed off that somebody that they trusted and believed um, was lying to them. Influencers lie all the time. They always have. Like, it was literally a thing for, like, I don't even know how long people were posting undisclosed sponsorships and not getting called out for it. And then finally when they did, it was like the veil was lifted and everybody was like, Oh my God. This isn't my parasocial bestie who's just recommending me all her favorite things. What? No, she's trying to make money. She's a salesperson. They're salespeople, which is not a bad thing. Like it's totally fine to be good at selling stuff. Like it's a skill to have, but like if you're kind of operating under the guise of you being a review channel and you honestly reviewing things for people, that's where I have a problem. However, the kind of vitriol that Michaela got sent her way was sometimes um, a, a bit excessive. Like I saw at least, at least one commentary channel um, who pretty much like admitted to just talking about the content and just talking about the scandal because they needed content to post. They're like, I'm just talking about it because I need content. Like they don't, they didn't know anything about it. There's this thing that I've noticed that a lot of drama channels do that now some commentary channels are doing more and more, which kind of pisses me off is that anytime, anytime a man is making content about a woman um, dealing with drama, almost always you can expect one of the photos in the thumbnail to be like an unflattering screenshot or like um, an edit of their face to make them look worse than they look at normal life. And I don't know, I just think that's really low. I think that's a low blow. I think that's not, that's a cheap shot. And it's like low key misogynist too. I feel like it's it's a little bit misogynist too, to just like take an opportunity where you could be talking about someone's actions and then to just like shit all over her success. <laughs> just because you're not the target audience of her beauty related content on TikTok does not mean that her audience is invalid or any worse than yours or any dumber than yours or any less worthy of content than yours. That's the kind of shit that really drives me crazy. This is kind of beside the point of like what she just did, but like her content at face value, like you can be annoyed that somebody who has a lot of followers is getting in trouble and making everybody else look bad. Absolutely. I was annoyed. I was like, really? We're still doing this? We're still doing undisclosed sponsorships? Like I was pissed off. I was annoyed. It just reminded me of like back when people started getting in trouble for um, not disclosing their Morphe sponsorships. And a lot of people looking at the community community as this like group of dumb sheeple that don't know how to discern between re like what's an ad and what isn't an ad. And now you have the same kind of thing happening, but with TikTok and you have people looking at her audience like they're stupid. Now that she's posted a response, a non-response, and completely disregarded it and just moved on. There is a, a, a portion of her audience that are just like not caring and they're just being like, yes, girl, move on, who cares? It's just mascara, blah, blah, blah. And, and then there's a group of people who are of the opposite mind of that. I thought it was really immature and, and really unprofessional to not address it because you being truthful to your fans is what's keeping your audience. I've used this one in a long time. What even was this video? I have no idea. This is all over the place, but I just wanted to talk about it and talk it out because I've had thoughts about it. I have feelings about it. And the long and short of it really is like, we are starting to see um, what happened on YouTube happen on TikTok. And I really do hope that the creators over there like take this as a lesson and, and actually like just be like honest and truthful to their audience because um, you can only go so far with lying to people <laughs> before your reputation is kind of destroyed. And um, with how quick things happen on TikTok, I could imagine it would it could happen so much faster. Like all of this started happening so fast. It was literally like they repeated all of these actions of YouTube that maybe happened over the course of like three years within the span of like 18 months or less. So it's been interesting to watch because there's all of these things going on on TikTok now. We're like de-influencing, which is just anti-hauls. Like people are starting to kind of recycle the same ideas that people came up with like five, six years ago here on YouTube. So it is funny to see like how similar things are happening just at 
a much more rapid rate. And then with specifically with what Michaela did, I think it was dumb and I think she should address it. And I think leaving it completely open-ended, um, you know, it's not professional. It's not a good look, but I also think that a lot of people took the kind of harassment too far where they started attacking her looks. Just like what happened with Jaclyn Hill. There were so many things that people could criticize that she did and she said, but people started to take it as an opportunity to make fun of her cheeks or her filler or her weight gain and fat shame her, which is uncalled for. Um, even if somebody has made a lot of shitty mistakes and has like wronged their, like you just, why, why, why do the low blow? Like what is with the low blow? It's always things that are like stereotypically like feminine interests that people try and downplay. And it's very frustrating, <laughs> especially from like young men where I'm like, I'm old. Shut up, please. This has been a whole very interesting thing to follow, really. It's been very fascinating to watch because we've seen it before. We really have seen it before. And I really hope that TikTokers can feel better about posting sponsored content because that's really the only way they're able to make money there, like actually. And posting things that are lying to their audience only hurts everybody in the long run. So um, please stop doing that if you're doing that. Thanks. Cool. So that's all I wanted to talk about, okay? Oh, also these palettes. Flora Story palette from Makeup Just For Fun. So pretty, very much my aesthetic. The Sea Talk palette from Lauren May Beauty. Very pretty indeed. I love this, this chartreuse. Oh yes, it's like the color that my hair used to be. And then the Planet Spirit palette from Batty Bean. This I also really like as well. I need to use this orange shade. This orange shade is screaming my name. And also this pink shade. These are like very like 90s shades and I dig it. It's very like 90s Nickelodeon. I kind of love it. So yeah, those are from Odin's Eye. <laughs> they got sent to me in PR. They got sent to me a couple weeks ago. So I've had them for a little bit. Um, For today's song of the day. Oh my God, you guys. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> There's been so much new music that's come out recently. It's kind of insane. Like We Are Scientists put out their last record, Lobes, like last month. Literally this week already we have um, Paramore um, and Rebecca Black and Foles. Like there's so much new music coming out. Like so much new music coming out and I love it all. I've been listening to the new Paramore record. I went back and I listened to Haley Williams' first solo record, Petals for Armor. Oh my God, it's so good. Why is that not before. Holy crap. Um, but yeah, the new Paramore record, This Is Why, mwah, amazing. So good. Probably the thing that's going to be today's song of the day. So Rebecca Black just released her first, her debut album, 12 years after um, Friday. The record is called Let Her Burn and it is very good. It's so good. I'm so excited for her, except I want her to come on tour. Oh boy, Genius has new music coming out too. Fuck. But today's song of the day is Sick to My Stomach. You should listen to the whole album and blast it from your car speakers. This video is probably all over the place. I will edit it as 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 um, coherently as I possibly can. I just had a lot of kind of incoherent thoughts where I was just like, really, people are trying to bring Jeffree Star back because he's honest about mascara, but also he's like a violent racist. Like, <sighs> frustrating to say the least. But if you would like to follow me on TikTok, I am Abbers over there as well as on Twitch, Abbers without the 07. And then uh, Twitter and Instagram, I'm Abbers 07. I've been the same username name since probably 2007, <laughs> which is now 15 years ago. Fuck. Yep. That's a long time ago. Holy shit. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, all of links to these palettes below in the description as well. Um, like I said, they did get sent to me in PR, but I'm not being paid to say this. Um, they just got sent to me and I like the eyeshadow palettes and I was excited for them. So those will be linked below. Thanks guys. Bye. <laughs> Subscribe too, please. Thanks. Okay. Now I'm actually going.